so this series of videos yeah uh, and I hope the viewer has patience to view them all because I think these are some of the most important videos I ever filmed you know these videos I'm going to try to give a clear picture of Wing Chun's true history and also uh, explain some motivations for me uh, doing the research and why I traveled to uh, whole of Southeast Asia and you know this will be a companion videos to a book I'm currently writing that I hope to bring out uh, somewhere in uh, 2015 you know maybe even in 2014 but how my schedule looks like now I think that's uh, almost impossible but I think it's very, very important for people to realize what I'm saying on these videos. You know, they always say, oh, nobody has all the answers, nobody knows the complete truth about Wing Chun's history. Yes, that's true, we were not there, I was not there, but we have facts. We have clear facts. We have writings from the 1890s, we have writings from around the 1850s, yeah, we have clear documented facts. So we can get a clear picture of Wing Chun's evolution. And I dare to say that 99% of the people out there have really a wrong view of Wing Chun's history. You know, they believe in the uh, Yin Wing Chun story and Un Mui seeing a crane and a snake fight and then came up with a new fighting system or they believe in other uh, stories, you know. And that uh, there are some fake uh, lineages out there who are exposed by the way no one to mention any names now again uh, will only make them more famous you know that they spreading huge loads of uh, misinformation out there doesn't help the fact yeah we have some very 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 good researchers out there uh, and people out there that are on the same wavelength like me and even help me uh, along the way uh, with my research yeah talking about people like Hendrik Santo and people like Sifu Robert Chu who really know what they're talking about you know and they prefer to stay in the background and I see it as my mission to bring out uh, Wing Chun's true history because you know if we don't know uh, you know we don't know where we're going if we don't know where we're coming from you know I think it's very very important so I've been coming to Hong Kong from uh, 20 years ago, you know, and I did a lot of research in the beginning, but all stuck in the Yip Man language, you know, and there's only so far you can go. You know, like I mentioned on one of my uh, earlier videos, you know, that you can see here up, yeah, about uh, is Yip Man uh, lineage really a pure lineage, you know, then you start to, to realize if you see that video that you have to look beyond Yip Man's venture to find out the origin of our system. And then you end up first thing in China, of course. Now you have some friends of mine in the US uh, and in Europe and they say, yeah, yeah, but I touch hands with the China guys, uh, with the Yung San lineage and stuff and the China Wing Chun and uh, yeah, we are much better, you know. Our Yip Man Wing Chun is superior. So uh, yeah, I don't agree with everything you're saying. You're a good researcher, but yes, you know, but you have to know some facts. I agree, the level of China Wing Chun nowadays is not that high. There are several reasons for that, you know. But uh, one uh, of the reasons is all the political trouble uh, China had in the past. And we're talking about the Cultural Revolution, where so many Kung Fu systems totally uh, perished, totally uh, were destroyed, you know, and people, the Many, many Kung Fu masters and Wing Chun masters were even uh, hanged in squares. And you have a lot of these Kung Fu grandmasters that fled China. They went to Taiwan, they went to Malaysia, they went to Indonesia, to Philippines, to Vietnam. So that's the reason that if you go now to, for example, Taiwan, you find a much, much higher quality of Kung Fu than in mainland China. I dare to say that more than 90% of the Kung Fu, the good quality Kung Fu, is just gone. 
So, but we still find uh, some clues there. We feel, still find some people practicing Wing Chun there. And we need these uh, keys in order to find the truth. And so I agree, you know, a lot of Wing Chun nowadays in uh, Europe and in USA is of a higher quality than what you can find in mainland China. But that's beside the point. <clears throat> First of all, I did all my research in Hong Kong and did with many different uh, Yip Man uh, students and touched hands and interviewed. And of course, there's a huge quality difference also, but that's all topic for another video. <clears throat> but then we look at where did Yip Man get his art from, right? So a little bit in Dai Dak Lan, eh? <clears throat> that you can uh, uh, very clearly trace back. And then most of his information he clearly got from Yun Kei San. And then you go to a, like you, you bump into a, a, a stop there, you know, you bump into a wall. What is beyond Yun Kei San or before Yun Kei San? You know, we know, ah, Fok Bo Chun, for example, you know, uh, was famous for his uh, double knife techniques. And then what's, what's before Fok Bo Chun? Then we run into all these legends. You know, where did Wing Chun come from? What is the origin of the system? On which Kung Fu systems it's based on? You know, this is a very, very important uh, question. You know, a lot of Kung Fu systems like I mentioned before, got lost during several instances in the Chinese history. You know, uh, for example, the Cultural Revolution, but also during instances in the 1800s. And that's when these Kung Fu masters fled China and went into uh, other countries of Southeast Asia. Now, to see where Wing Chun uh, originates from, we have to go back further and further in time, right? And luckily, through hard work of uh, several people, you know, and uh, one, like I mentioned before, uh, Hendrik Santo, who had the luck to study Wing Chun in the Chou family and that his Sifu passed on several documents to him, you know, uh, is, is our luck that through these uh, happenings in history that we can trace back all the way back to Wing Chun's origins. You know? And of course, like I mentioned before, we were not there. So we know, don't know exactly what happened, but we do have very uh, clear facts and documents to at least present and show this is uh, Wing Chun's DNA. These are the Kun Kuts, these are the poems this is what the theory is based on, and then you can trace it, and you come to a conclusion, which uh, is, at least to me, and to Sifu Robert Chu, and to Hendrik Santo, and to Jim Rosalindo, you know, and some other uh, people out there, very, very, very clear. Uh, you know, Wing Chun is based upon two main systems. First of all, Fujian White Crane, you know, and to go into the Fujian White Crane, let me very clearly in between tell something about that. You know, the Fujian White Crane is victim to the same uh, incident, incidents in Chinese history. If we look at Fujian White Crane nowadays in Yongchun village, is nowhere near of the quality of the original Fujian white crane. You know, the original white crane system, before it got split into, the, into several systems, it was one very compact uh, system. And for example, nowadays here in Hong Kong, we have a great grandmaster, you know, uh, uh, Lei Kong, who is really uh, uh, able to demonstrate white crane in all its effectiveness. And if you compare that to the white crane, that's being taught nowadays in, uh, in China, in Yongchun village. There is so much difference, so big, big difference in quality. Another uh, place where we can find really, really good white crane is in Taiwan. You know, great uh, uh, 
uh, uh, martial artists there, great white grand masters there. But in mainland China nowadays, almost all uh, are gone. So the systems on which Wing Chun is based are Fujian White Crane, 